Welcome to the world of Nintendo, a world that's filled with games and characters that allows any person to be who they want to be while they conquer any army that puts up a fight against them. This report will explore the inner workings of Nintendo's operation. We will go in depth about the current external environment, which covers the economy, social cultural trends, political and legal issues, and technology changes. We will discuss the gaming industry and give a competitive analysis of the market. We will discuss the firm and Nintendo's goals and objectives and mission. We will discuss the current marketing strategy. We'll give a SWOT analysis and we'll discuss the management team. The financial crisis of 2008 caused a tremendous slowdown in the global economy. This impacted the video games industry because consumers began to limit the amount of money spent on leisure activities. From 2008 to 2012, industry revenue averaged an annual decline of 1.7%. The industry is gradually beginning to regain momentum with 2012 revenue projected to be $34.2 billion and 2017 revenue to be $44.7 billion. Industry value add is expected to grow at 6% from 2007 to 2017 compared to GDP growth of 1.9% over the same 10-year period. Another economic factor that impacts the video games industry is fluctuating currency value. As an example, 80% of Nintendo sales comes from overseas sales. The fluctuation in foreign exchange rates will have a direct influence on earnings when foreign currencies are converted to Japanese yen. Japanese yen appreciation against the U.S. dollar or euro would have a negative impact on Nintendo's profitability. The video games industry is in the growing stage of the life cycle. The average age of game players is 30 and has been playing for 12 years. The largest growing demographic is women over the age of 18. During the late 1990s to early 2000s, women seemed to be comfortable playing games marketed towards men. But recent developments in game design and marketing have opened up potential markets in this demographic. The first video gamers are now over the age of 40 and some are approaching 50. New markets will open up for this demographic as well as publishers begin to design games for these players. Nintendo has already begun this with the release of the DS Brain Age. The video games industry is publicly viewed as a contributor to the childhood obesity epidemic, but with the growing popularity of gaming systems like Nintendo Wii, many schools are experimenting with extra gaming, a combination of exercise and video game technology. The idea is to make being active fun. Some popular extra games are Dance Dance Revolution, Zumba Fitness, and Wii Fit. A common controversial topic about video games is that they increase violent behavior of children and young adults. However, federal crime statistics suggest serious violent crimes among youth have fallen since 1996 as video sales have climbed. A study conducted by Chris Ferguson, now impressed with Journal of Psychiatric Research, followed 165 10 to 14-year-old boys and girls over a three-year period and found no link between violent video games and aggression. Due to concerns about video games, Governments across the globe have constituted or tried to pass legislation that would regulate or ban video games. On June 27, 2011, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in favor of the EMA ESA striking down a 2005 California statute that would have regulated the sale of violent computer and video games to minors. The court ruled that video games are protected under the First Amendment. In response to consumer and political backlash, the video games industry began to put video games rating systems in place. The ratings help consumers discern what type of content 
is in the video games. The rating systems also reflect that not all video games are targeted at young children. The shift of the industry is online distribution, but there is hesitancy to do so because of the concern of piracy. Digital rights management software has been developed to prevent piracy, but it depreciates the quality of the product. In 2008, Nintendo asked the U.S. to address video game piracy problems worldwide. The firm pointed out China as the primary source of manufacturing piracy, but Korea as the leader in illegal online distribution. Cloud gaming is the future of the video games industry. Games on demand service providers like Otoy, OnLive, and Gaikai are trying to shift video game norms away from being played on consoles or PCs. Instead, the games will be streamed from the servers of their data centers and will be available 24 by 7. However, cloud gaming technology presents issues. Response and latency times from the data center will take longer. The images generated from the data center and the response time it takes after a gamer presses a button will take longer than it will from a console or a PC. In response to public claims that there is a link between playing video games and childhood obesity, movement-based gaming input devices have become a technological trend. The introduction and success of the Nintendo Wii was an indicator that consumers had an unfulfilled demand for a video game console and games that allow freedom of movement. Sony and Microsoft released their own versions of full-body movement input devices in response to the Wii. In April 2012, the U.S. President's Council and the ESA announced a joint initiative to encourage Americans to start exercising using video games through the Active Play PALA Plus Challenge. There has been a huge trend in online play, especially with other players. Online games can be free of charge, but are usually offered as subscription-based software and run on dedicated servers. In massively multiplayer online role-playing games, the publisher server is a dedicated server that accepts payment for guaranteed slots on the server. An example of such an online game is World of Warcraft, which has been the single most successful game for seven years and has more than 10 million subscribers. Hi, my name is Bridget Cross. I'm going to talk to you a little bit now about Nintendo's firm. I'm going to talk a little bit about the background first. Since 2009, Nintendo has had a decreasing revenue and net income. Um, this is flowing down to the shareholders uh, with a decreasing earnings per share. Nintendo and its competitors are at the mercy of the market right now in the economy. There's just no disposable income when it comes to buying video games and video game consoles. For the most part that's decreased significantly and that's really what Nintendo is feeling the effect of. Their stock price over the past year has fallen by 40 percent. Quarterly revenue growth is a negative 55.7 percent. Return on equity is negative 3.5 percent. These decreases have been felt for the past three years. It's obvious that it's from the economy uh, and the disposable income of consumers is just not it's not on the minds of, of them to invest in gaming systems and leisurely activities. Although Nintendo is showing negative uh, returns and decreasing net income it seems that they're invested in the future. Uh, if you look at their balance sheet, the property and equipment from 2010 to 2011 has increased. Software has increased. And short-term debt has remained about the same. To me, that implies that they're investing in the future. They're buying facilities. They're buying and creating intellectual property. They're doing this all with cash reserves which uh, if you take a look at cash on the balance sheet has not decreased very much so they're investing uh, cash into their company without taking on debt I think in 2012 
when they roll out the Wii U, that's really going to add a spark to their earnings. Hopefully, by late 2012, consumer confidence has turned around a little bit, and that will, in turn, increase the fourth quarter revenue for Nintendo. I think that the future for Nintendo is is pretty bright. They've got the brand name to back up, um, you know, years of experience. Hopefully they will regain the market share that they've had. There will be a technology leader decreasing their debt and eventually their R&D will pay off. When talking about the current marketing strategy of Nintendo, it is important to focus on four key aspects. This includes their strategy and objectives, the target market, and the marketing mix. This all ties together to achieve their overall the mission to provide the world's best entertainment products and services, continued growth, and to create a fun and happy connection with their customers. In the next few slides, I specifically want to talk about Nintendo's current targeted market and the individual market of components that make up the market itself. Are also a few of the areas that are at the top Hi, of my name is Bridget Cross. I can talk Nintendo to you a little bit now about Nintendo Farm. I'm going to talk a little bit about the background first and what has made, made Nintendo a uh, famous company that they are. Like of exercise we all know that Nintendo is one of the best video gaming companies. They all happen to be the world's third largest video gaming company in terms of published and developed games. They have this the highest market the value of any video company in the world and can claim ownership of some of the most influential video games of all time as well. Is a prime example Let's of face this. it, who hasn't heard of games all the, uh, such as Mario, The Legend of Zelda, and Metroid? Um, Nintendo's, Nintendo's unique business is based on a software-driven integration of hardware and software. In 1985, uh, they introduced the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, and sold over 60 million units in the first two years. As technology changed and demand for gaming systems increased, Nintendo's R&D department created its first handheld unit, the Game Boy. The freedom of being able to take the and no, play them anywhere, anywhere create a desire to purchase the Game Boy by both by players here, and um, parents. Giving you a board Since its introduction in 1989, the unit has sold in Nintendo. excess of 153 um, million all the board systems global. Over the last 22 years, the company has created designs that, that offer optimum graphics, collaborative in a variety of colors, larger on-screen coverage, shop. new optimal so disc instead of cartridges, more compact versions, touchscreen touch cameras, Wi-Fi capabilities, 3D imaging, and, 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 and the latest innovation of interactive software. Five different countries we can tell by this that each of those locations has its own market in a the objective and mission of Nintendo. Nintendo's mission statement the smiles on every face not only applies to its customers, but it also to 4,712 employees as well. The company's corporate mission and philosophy are clearly stated on its website, and it goes into deep detail about customer appreciation, commitment towards employees, and producing high-quality products. Nintendo wants to be the ultimate gaming console for people of different ages. Groups. Their continued Who research and marketing strategies help to keep Nintendo at the top of the to latest and greatest technology-based gaming system. Everything they do is focused on creating innovative content, product strategies, wanting to target a wide variety of industries, Nintendo redesigned the controller to make it easier and more natural to play the game. They also added motion sensitivity to the president. Pricing strategy, Nintendo focused on trying to break the economic barriers. Competitors came in prices range from five three hundred and fifty at the low end to over five hundred at the high end. Nintendo offers their gaming system starting at two hundred and fifty dollars, which is what it cost you to purchase a Nintendo Wii. In addition, Nintendo's games 
which are sold separately from the actual system, are around $10 cheaper than its competitors. Promotional strategies at one point with each Nintendo Wii purchase, the company was offering a free game, which just so happened to be one of their best games ever created. Additionally, Nintendo offered a Wi-Fi connection that allowed customers with high-speed internet service to play certain online games against other people for free. Supply chain strategy. Nintendo purchases parts from several companies such as ATI, IBM, and Panasonic, then develop the machines in their Japan factories. After testing each unit, Nintendo then ships the machines to local stores in America, Europe, and other branches. Upon arriving in their desired designated branch, the machines are again tested to ensure configurations have been installed and enabled. Shortly thereafter, the machines are shipped to distributor warehouses or direct to distributor stores such as Target, GameStop, or Walmart for shelf stocking to sell to customers. Overall strengths and weaknesses of Nintendo, um, I would have to say that one major weakness would be uh, having a neg that would have a negative impact on the company and cause them to be vulnerable is internal company employees. While this gives the board of directors an advantage because they've experienced the company's success and failures, there is a downside to it also. With Nintendo being a globally recognized company, it would be beneficial for the company to incorporate a more diverse board of directors to help structure the company's growth. There has been evidence of Nintendo's strong family, Japanese hold in management and director positions starting to slowly change as Nintendo continues to grow globally. Incorporation of lead management positions from nationals in these new facilities can only enhance the company more. A strength that Nintendo's firm would be recognized for would be their continued desire and drive to be the best gaming company in the world. Every year they have come out with a new console for fans and families to enjoy. I believe the Wii helped to show the concern the company has for allegations. Children and adults are spending too much time in front of the TV. Hi everyone, I'm going to talk about the SWOT analysis for Nintendo today. And as you just heard, that is a uh, clip from the Super Mario Brothers game. When you used to, when you clear a level, that's the sound they used to play. I'm sure many of you recognize it. Uh, that deals with their first strength of Nintendo is their brand reputation and recognition. Many of us have heard of Nintendo, understand their characters, Super Mario Brothers, Mario and Luigi, and uh, it's almost part of the American society for the last 20 or so years. Uh, another strength is their debt-free status and their stable management. The company has been run by the same few people for many years now. They understand how the business works. They've done a great job in the past. They don't want any debt so they can keep, their, keep money available for R&D, new projects, new games, just so they can stay current with all the new gaming systems that they're putting out. Uh, two other strengths I'm going to talk about uh, in tandem is the Wii partnership with Hulu and Netflix and the Wi-Fi capabilities. Uh, the Wii was the first Nintendo system that had Wi-Fi capability, so you could be able to get online to shop, to play, to communicate, to surf the web. Uh, you could talk to other people. Uh, in addition, you could also get onto the Hulu website and Netflix website and download TV shows, games, movies, or other uh, you know, entertainment games that you would like to play while you're, you're using your Wii. You don't need to use your computer. You can use the Wii in order to do this. Another product is the Wii U that's coming out later this year that's also going to have these Wi-Fi capabilities and the partnerships as well. The final strength I'm going to talk about is the price point. The, specifically, the Wii has been priced $100 to $200 less than their main competition. This is a great strength. The price point, having people at a lower price point, you know, always try to pushes out more units than those at a higher price point, unless you have something that does some, something much more spectacular, which the competition is, they're all kind of in the same level there. Next, I'm going to talk about a couple of weaknesses. 
the first two weaknesses, reliance on outside manufacturers and inventory issues, going to go hand in hand. Uh, Nintendo doesn't manufacture their own units. They have other companies that do this. Uh, this can kind of cause an inventory issues, supply and demand. When a new, new product is coming out, there could be a problem depending on the, the, the demand for it. So they need to really be on top of it and understand what the demand is going to be so they don't have a shortage. Uh, the second weakness goes with one of their strengths. They did have a stable management, but there's not a lot of diversity. Many of the top management leaders are Japanese. Uh, this could cause a problem going forward, maybe branching out into new markets, to the Middle East, to India, but time will tell on that. But they really need to diversify. Uh, now we'll talk about some opportunities. A big opportunity that's coming down the pike uh, that's already here is online gaming. The online gaming market is huge. There's a lot of opportunity. We all understand this uh, with the internet. You can go online and play games. You don't need to buy a game console. So Nintendo needs to, to combat that or get on board with that. So the opportunity is to get on board with that and make some Nintendo games, online gaming, where you don't need to buy a, a console and you can just do it maybe from your phone or your computer. Another opportunity is the Middle East and Indian markets. They don't really do a lot of work there, uh, so those are two areas where they can expand. Both markets are growing, especially the Indian market. has The internet market there has grown over 20 times in the past five years. So this means that younger people are getting online and they'll be more receptive to new video games and consoles and, and gaming systems. A final opportunity is the manufacturing process, which we talked about as a weakness. We can now make that an opportunity by having a better supply chain and working with your vendors to make sure you have enough product for the public. Finally, we're going to talk about the threats. One of the, uh, the top threat I see right now is the smartphone and the tablets. Anybody with a smartphone or a tablet, the Barnes & Noble Nook, the Kindle Fire, or the iPad, you can go online and download games for free for 99 cents for very cheaply. One of the biggest ph phenomenons of online gaming is Angry Birds. We all see this game all over. There's merchandise, there's toys, there's pillows, there's t-shirts. So these Angry Birds are everywhere. Nintendo must understand about the smartphones and the tablets and how this online gaming is working and really get involved with it and embrace it. Uh, the next two threats I'm going to talk about is the volatile exchange rate and the weak economy. They kind of go together how most of their revenue is outside of Japan and they're a Japanese company. So they need to convert all of the revenue back into the Japanese currency, which, depending on the, the exchange rates, could be positive or negative. So that is always a threat if it goes, you know, the, the exchange rates go the wrong way. In addition, the weak economy all over the world is affecting the gaming industry. People don't have disposable income. They're not spending money on video games. Another big threat is the short product life cycle cycle of these gaming systems. Two to three years is probably the peak of these video game consoles with the games. So Nintendo needs to market it, sell it, and make a profit all within two to three years. Because after that, the sales of the units really drop off dramatically. Uh, along with the short product life cycle is their competition. Sony and Microsoft are the two big competitors of Nintendo. So they need to understand what their competitors are doing what games they're making, what consoles they're making, and really be a step ahead of their competition because all of the gaming systems kind of do the same thing. They all have Wi-Fi, uh, and they really need to understand their, their competition and really make better games and better game consoles. A fact with that, with the game console, is the declining console market. In 2000, the console video game console market was... 80% of the gaming industry. Now, in 2011, that's down to 40% of the, the video game market as the video game consoles. So this is a real problem for Nintendo because they rely on selling their consoles to people and then buying the games. 
So it looks like the future of the gaming industry is changing a little. So Nintendo really needs to stay abreast of what's going on and understand their the market. Nintendo's board of directors has a president, three senior managing directors, one managing director, and a chief operating officer. All are Japanese members who have previously served in various other departments within the company. While this management movement shows Nintendo's dedication to an internal environment, it doesn't reflect much diversity on the company's behalf. Several board members were intricate in planning the newly anticipated Nintendo 3DS. Because the board members bring multiple years of finance, legal, and licensing experience, they set the precedent for the company's success and failure. Nintendo's top management is the board of directors. The corporate level that serves directly under that top management are the various branches of the organization. The UK team, which is led by David Yarnton, the Europe team, who just added legal counsel Matthew Hill, and the US team, also known as Nintendo of America. The turnover rate is very low at Nintendo. This could be good because retaining employees inclusive of their knowledge and skills could save the company money. But it could also be bad because as top management gets older, appealing to a younger crowd becomes harder. Nintendo's top management has struggled to change with recent technology. It is imperative that they quickly develop a systematic approach to strategic management. The Nintendo gaming system has been around for many years. There are many customers who would like to see it stay for many more. Thank you for watching our presentation.